coming up next on Business Minds Coffee Chat. When we say place other people's interests first, we simply mean understanding, as Joe learned from several of the mentors in the story, that, and as you and I discussed earlier, uh, the golden rule of business, which says all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Well, there's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you in others than by genuinely moving from that I focus, that focus on yourself, to that other focus, that focus on bringing immense value to others. Hey guys, it's Jay, and I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered how I have this much energy and this much fun when I record Business Minds Coffee Chat? Well, part of it is the incredible guests we bring on, but the other part is how much I focus on high performance, both in terms of getting to the gym every morning and also how I fuel my body and my brain. You see, before I record any episode of this podcast or do any work that requires my total focus, when I need to perform at my best... I have a secret weapon that makes me feel like my best self. It's called Ambitious Edge. Edge is a nootropic drink mix that comes in two amazing and delicious flavors, berry and tropical. You just take one scoop, mix it in water, and then the magic starts to happen. Brain fog? Gone. Distractions? They've run away. Energy? Your tank is filled. And don't worry, it's 100% natural. And if you know me, you know how important that is. There's zero grams of sugar, so you won't crash, and it's jam-packed with ingredients that make your mind stronger day after day. And of course, as a listener of Business Minds Coffee Chat, I have totally got you guys hooked up. So when you go to ambitious.com and order Edge today, you're going to get $10 off your order when you use the promo code coffee chat. If you're ready to have the energy, the focus, and the drive you need to accomplish all of your goals and ambitions, just head to ambitious.com and use the promo code coffee chat to save $10 today. Is business networking an active or passive activity for you? We all need to network up. It's not what you know, but who you know. That means we must always be on the lookout for a qualified connection, a vetted connection that cares as much about us as we do about them. Rob Thomas teaches you to do that. Rob is the creator of the Rob Thomas Method of Networking and Networking and Diners, a vetted networking group of business professionals. Rob instructs you on how to ask good questions and discover the ways to make a new or existing connection stronger. Rob can add value to your own process or can provide training on exactly how to identify, maximize, refine, and nurture your contacts. With networking, you get out of it what you put into it. Visit robthomasusa.com to unlock your networking skills and learn how to transform your connections into profitable relationships. Hi, this is Bob Berg, and you're listening to Business Minds Coffee Chat with Jay Shear. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consulting. Welcome. I'm Jay Shear with Jay Shear Business Consulting. We build solid foundations for service-based businesses to grow and scale and achieve the success and results they deserve. And you've joined Business Minds Coffee Chat. The late, great Zig Ziglar said, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Well, on today's episode, we're going to talk about the meaning behind this quote, shifting our focus from getting to giving, giving value to others, the five laws of stratospheric success, and more. Our guest started in radio doing sports, then TV as a late night news anchor before getting into sales. A seminar he attended by Zig Ziglar changed the trajectory of his life. Today, he's a best-selling author and Hall of Fame keynote speaker who successfully shows entrepreneurs, leaders, and sales professionals how to communicate their value and accelerate their referral business. Please welcome the man whose little story has positively impacted countless lives and businesses, Bob Berg. Bob, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for being here. 
Well, I got to tell you, you know, I, I told you earlier how how great I think your voice is. Uh, I've now pretty much decided that um, uh, that maybe along with Morgan Freeman, I would want you to be the narrator of my life if my life had a narrator. Oh, my so, goodness. And, I, I'm and, honored. <laughs> as a Thank former so radio much. guy, as a former radio guy, I can say your voice is man right up there. Oh, you are very kind. Thank you for that. So, Bob, your your book, and we're going to be talking a great deal about The Go-Giver. Your book has had a substantial impact on my life. And, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, has certainly impacted the lives of countless others. But before we get to The Go-Giver, I mentioned a little bit about your background and some things that you had done in the past. I would really love you to give us a bit more context on where you, where your story begins before the go-giver, before the accolades, and before the success that you have achieved up to this point. Well, as you mentioned, I, I started out in radio as a sportscaster. I then went into um, television news only because I couldn't find a job on TV in sports. And I figured eventually I'd work my way over to a sports um, broadcasting position, but it didn't happen. And so I was the late night news guy for a very small ABC affiliate in the Midwestern United States. Um, I wasn't particularly good at it. Uh, I could read the news and, you know, I think anyone can pretty much do that, but I, I certainly wasn't a journalist and it wasn't long before I saw that television was just, it was not going to be my career. So I, I like to say I graduated into sales. Now the challenge was I had, I had no experience in sales, uh, no formal training in sales and the company where I, I worked, uh, it just wasn't something that they, you know, held to be a high value. So I was pretty much on my own and, and I floundered for, for a few months until I, I finally, one day I found myself in a bookstore and, and was looking for something. I didn't realize I was looking for books on selling because I didn't realize at the time that books on selling even existed. This is 40 years ago and that it just wasn't as prevalent. It wasn't something everyone knew that there was sales training out there. Uh, but I did see two books. One was by Tom Hopkins, the other by Zig Ziglar. And I, I got those, but I mean, I was amazed just that those books even existed. I'm thinking what there's actually a way to sell. Uh, there's someone who's done this before a proven system. I had, I really had no idea as silly as, you know, that, as that would sound today. So I, I got their books and I began studying them and every night, get home from work into the wee hours of the morning, I'd be reading and highlighting and note-taking and, and practicing. And you know, I mean, just, I mean, I just really went at it. So within a few weeks, my sales began to go through the roof. And the interesting thing is there was really no significant difference between the Bob Berg of three weeks ago and the, and the Bob Berg three weeks later, other than I now had a methodology to follow. I had a system and I personally define a system simply as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. The key being predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you, you can get the desired results of B, then you know that all you need to do is follow A and follow A, you know, do A, and eventually you're going to get the desired result of, of B. So, I just love that idea. Sales became a lot more fun. Uh, and I began really making a study of, along with sales, of personal development, because I began to realize that selling wasn't just about selling. It was about building yourself. It was about growing yourself. And so uh, I started getting all the great books, the books from Og Mandino. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, Ziggs, I got his back then cassette tapes and, and Tom Hopkins cassette tapes. I started attending seminars whenever I could, such as Ziggs and um, you know, books like How to Win Friends and Influence People and The Magic of Thinking Big and Psycho-Cybernetics and uh, Think and Grow Rich and all the, you know, all the classics that we all, I'm sure, have in our, in our, uh, on our bookshelves. Uh, but so that was really, uh, I just loved it and eventually worked my way up to uh, sales manager of another company and, uh, and then started showing others how to do what was working for me. And uh, as they say in the old Seinfeld episode, yada, yada, yada. 35 years later, 40 years later, whatever, here I am <laughs> speaking with you. 
Uh, fantastic. Well, I, thank you for for giving some added context around that. Greatly appreciated. I I want to go back. You know, since you brought up Zig Ziglar, I mentioned Zig in the intro as well. And that you are also what, you also, by the way, this is important. You are one of the few people who actually got that his famous quote, who, who quoted it correctly. Because typically people mangle that quote. It's one of the most beautiful, beautiful quotes, I think, that has ever been spoken, <laughs> ever. And very few people actually go. It's, it's a pet peeve of mine, as you can tell, to take such a magnificent quote. And most people mess it up. And, uh, and, and you got it perfect. So thank you for doing that in honor. Absolutely. Of <laughs> and, and, and I feel you on that. And I, I remember I had the opportunity to meet Zig many, many years before his death. And he just not only his magnetism, his ability to articulate just yeah. such amazing wisdom mm -hmm. in a way that stuck. It was very sticky right through his storytelling. And like yeah. you, I'm, you know, I was listening to tapes, <laughs> tapes <laughs> off so often that I, the tapes would break and I would have to tape them together <laughs> again. And they never sounded exactly the same, but the, the information was there and it resonated. But what I wanted to, to ask you about that quote, and I'm sure you've like, like you or like me, you've probably heard that quote a million times. What does what does that quote mean to you when you break it down? It seems so simple, but, and it is, but it's not common practice. So right. explain which that quote means to you, if you don't mind. No, not at all. So, so let's, let's look at it in a sense through the eyes of the basic premise of the go giver, which of course was written years and years and many years after Zig's famous quote and bring it back to that. Okay. So the premise of the go giver, and you alluded to this earlier is that shifting your focus, right? So taking it off of yourself and placing it, placing it onto others, shifting your focus from getting to giving. When we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only a, a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. Not for any way out there, woo-woo, goody-good, magical, mystical reasons, but for very logical, rational reasons. When you're that person who can move from an I focus or me focus to an other focus, looking for ways to serve others, make their lives better, discover what they want, what they need, what they desire, help them solve and overcome their challenges, help bring them closer to happiness. When you can do that, people feel good about you. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in a relationship with you. They want to do business with you. They want to tell others about you. Okay. So now let's go back to what Zig said, right? You can have everything in life that you want if you will help, if you will first, right? help other people get what they want. So if you can focus on them, and let's face it, it's got to be, and this is what Zig taught and understood so well, the focus must be on them. Why? Because, and I say this uh, typically whenever I speak at sales conferences, okay, the first thing I'll say is, uh, you know, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet, Okay. They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. You have a mortgage payment to meet. You want to send your kids to a good school. They're not going to buy from you even just because you're a really nice person. They're going to buy from you because they believe they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And in a free market based economy, uh, free market simply meaning no one's forced to do business with anyone else, right? They do so voluntarily. Uh, when you think about it, that's the only reason why anyone should buy from you or from me or from Zig or from anyone else. So what Zig was saying is, if you wanna get what you want, if you wanna get the results you want, you can only do it through helping other people get what they want. And that's selling, that's what selling is. Selling is simply discovering what the other person needs, wants, or desires and helping them to get it. And I think that's exactly what Zig was saying. That's why John David Mann, my awesome co-author of The Go-Giver and, and The Go-Giver series, why we say that money is simply an echo of value. 
right? Money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder to values lightning, which means the focus must be on the value you provide another human being. The money you receive is simply a natural result of the value you've provided. You can have wow. everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Zig Ziglar. <laughs> so beautifully said in your voice with the additional context around it. And, and I love that so much. And I want to make sure that we are highlighting this particular point for all of our, our audience, those that are watching and those that are listening. In my line of work, one of the things that I see often is that we're not asking the questions. We're not asking what our customers want. We are making assumptions that they want what I have. Absolutely. And let's spend time truly understanding what their needs are and do I have the solution that can fulfill those needs? Yeah. So Jeff Shore, one of today's great salespeople, sales professionals, and sales, sales teachers and best-selling authors, he says most of the most salespeople in the world are obsessed with solving the problem before they actually um, or are, are obsessed with providing the solution before they actually understand the problem. Mm. So uh, my apologies to Jeff for mangling that his, his wonderful quote and lesson, but, but that really is, you know, and as human beings, because we see the world from a certain viewpoint, namely our own, our own set of beliefs, right? Our belief systems, we tend to believe that other people see the world basically the same way we do. Right. It's not true. So when we talk about providing value to others, we need to first understand the difference between price and value. Price is a dollar figure. It's a dollar amount, right? It's finite. It is what it is. Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, features, benefits, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to another human being that they will willingly exchange their, whether it's time, money, what have you for this. Okay. But here's what we've always got to understand as salespeople. And this is so important. Value is always in the eyes of the beholder. And that beholder is our prospective customer or client. It's not what we believe is of value about our product or service. It's not what we think they should believe is of value. <laughs> it's what they believe is of value. Such, such a powerful point. And you've obviously touched on the very first law of stratospheric success from the go-giver. Before we go there though, this wasn't your first book. And we're talking about relationships. We're talking about human relations. We're talking about how we engage with others, building rapport and understanding what our, our current clients and potential prospects, what their needs are, yeah. right? And being able to fulfill those needs. So your, your first book, which came out in the 90s, was Endless Referrals. And that book really was a, a, a how-to book. It was a, a, a system, if you will, on how to build relationships. So just very briefly, if you could touch on endless referrals and how that came to be. Yeah. Well, that was written for salespeople and entrepreneurs who knew they had a great product or service and knew it brought fantastic value to others, but they, they perhaps weren't confident or comfortable with going out into their local communities and developing the kinds of relationships that would cause people to want to do business with them and or refer them to others. So endless referrals was, as you, as you said, a system, right? The process of predictably achieving a goal, a system for being able to, to develop those kinds of relationships in a way that was very, very confident building and, and, and made you feel very comfortable, both you and the prospects that you would be, that you would be meeting. It was based on an overarching premise. And that I guess is sort of in my calling card since that book, or since I've been speaking, which was actually even a little before that. And, and that is that all things being equal, all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. That's really what, we, what, what that was based on. 
Okay, perfect. So I want to ask you, since we're just touching on that book, the topic of networking, there's many in our audience who are involved in different networking groups, different business groups. As you look over your body of work and your experience, what piece of advice would you give to, let's say, maybe a relatively new business owner who doesn't know a lot of people yet, is in a community where they're starting to get involved in maybe some networking events? What Mm -hmm. can they do? What should they be focused on when they go to a networking event? And how can they how can they achieve the greatest level of, of success for themselves in networking? Well, I think the first thing is to understand what networking is and what it isn't, because it's a term that has you know been around for a long time, but is, I think is so convoluted in meaning only in that it can mean different things to different people. So you say the word networking and, and you know, you get people groaning, oh no, not networking, but they're not groaning because of what networking is. They're groaning because of what they think networking is, right? So, so many people even today have this, this idea in their mind when they hear the word networking, they picture the, you know, the stereotypical networking sales guy, right? The one who works the crowd, who meets people, backhands, glad hands, shakes hands, slaps hands, sticks a business card aggressively into people's faces and says, hey, give me a call, cut you a deal, right? Or, or something like that. And of course, that's, that's not networking. Um, I don't know what that is, but it, it's, <laughs> it's certainly not networking. So let's instead define networking as the cultivating of mutually beneficial give and take or give and receive win-win relationships. Again, networking is the cultivating of mutually beneficial give and take or give and receive win-win relationships. Now, the emphasis, of course, is on the giving part. What are you giving? You are giving value. You're giving value to that person from the moment you meet them. No, not through talking about your product or service or giving your elevator speech or trying to sell them your hat and, and so forth. No, not at all. It's simply by focusing on them, focusing on, on getting to know them, asking questions that make them feel good about themselves that allow you to establish a relationship with this person that you can then follow up and follow through with in terms of cultivating that relationship. When we approach it that way, and there, by the way, you know, back when I wrote uh, Endless Referrals, uh, gosh, I think they were like maybe two or three other networking books out there. Uh, 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 Ann Bowes uh, is your networking, uh, Susan Rowan's How to Work a Room. And there might've been a couple others and then mine, Endless Referrals. So there weren't a lot. Now there's tons of them and they're all great. I mean, but, you know, I, I read lots of them and they're fantastic. And you've got someone like, you know, Ivan Meisner who founded BNI, Business Network International has written about 15 of them. And he's probably the master of all in, in terms of, you know, when it comes to this, this topic. And, and you've got so many people, so many men and women who've written so many wonderful books on networking. And the theme is pretty much the same with all of us. It's take the focus off yourself and focus on others, on how you can build relationships with others. There's nothing quite like the intoxicating aroma of fresh brewed coffee, the anticipation and the way that first sip makes you feel like you have the world at your fingertips. Since 2012, 1565 Artisan Coffee has been roasting the finest 100% pure Arabica coffee. Their coffee is small batch roasted in St. Augustine, Florida to capture the essence of life there. Brave, authentic, enduring, soulful, and honest. With five signature blends to choose from, there's plenty of happiness to enjoy. From their medium dark roast cannonball with notes of brown sugar, chocolate, and toasted marshmallow, to their light roast estuary blend with notes of cocoa, dark cherry, and mild citrus. One of my favorites is their medium roast stump knocker with notes of toasted pecan, chocolate, and stone fruit. When you're ready to discover your happy place and enjoy the perfect cup of coffee that makes you smile, visit 1565coffee.com. 
Having a strong online presence and engaging content that maximizes your brand's message and delivers results is a must-have today. With so many so-called web designers flooding the market, it's important to work with someone who truly has the knowledge and experience, is a trusted partner, who puts customers first, understands their business, and has a history of proven results. I trust my web development and maintenance to Chenzo Does Web. From web development to digital marketing content creation to SEO optimization, Chenzo does it all. When you're ready to level up your digital marketing strategy and grow your business, visit ChenzoWeb.com. He does web so you can do you. And now let's get back to the show. Now, I would always start when, you know, by understanding that when you go to this first networking meeting, okay, and it might be or that stereotypical chamber of commerce networking exchange, or it might be a charity event. Uh, it might be some, some business social function put on, held by, you know, whomever in your town, and you have a great chance to meet some people. When you go to this meeting and you can know nobody there, it's okay, okay? But, but you know, you're gonna see people And you're going to see people who look approachable. You're going to see people who are surrounded by other people who are hanging on to their every word. And there's a good chance that that's a a center of influence, someone you might want to meet. You might get there a little early and and kind of help with the setup and, and just kind of get to know a few people who can maybe introduce you to some people. But the big thing is that you don't have to meet a lot of people at any one of these kinds of events. You'll meet a few people. And you'll engage with a few people. And when you do this, you'll place your focus on them. You'll you'll understand that, um, you know, to the degree that you can ask them questions about themselves, that's the degree you're going to establish a relationship. So let, can, may I share just a couple of questions for people to ask new networkers or new business people to ask? Let's say you meet someone, his name is Gary. Gary sells copying machines, okay? And again, you met Gary because you were at the hors d'oeuvres table at the same time. You made eye contact. Uh, he, looked, he saw you, you smiled, he smiled. He said, hi, um, and you said your name. He said, oh, I'm Gary Malashevsky. And you said, oh, what do you do, Gary? And Gary probably gave you his big elevator speech because that's what people do, okay? When he asks you what you do, you just tell him just a one, a quick word. You know, I'm an accountant with so-and-so or uh, I sell real estate with so-and-so or I'm an in- an insurance broker with. It just because right, right now, as far as, you know, giving your big elevator speech, he doesn't care, right? He doesn't right. care. He cares about himself and his business. So th- there's always time, okay? So what you want to do is instead kind of go back to focusing on him. I have questions. I call these questions feel-good questions. Feel-good questions are simply questions. They're not salesy, prospecty, intrusive, invasive. Uh, they just feel good. Feel good questions. They very quickly develop, establish a rapport. And you might ask them, so Gary, how did you get started uh, in the uh, copying machine business? Or a little bit more elegant might be, how did you get started as an office products professional? Okay. And, and that's a question. It's not a slick question, not a clever question. In fact, it's a pretty mundane question when you think about it, right? Right. People love to answer that question. Why? Because you've just made them the star. You've made them the movie of the week. You've basically communicated that even though we've just met, I want to know more about you. I find you fascinating. I want to hear your story. How many people ask Gary to share his story about how he got into selling copying machines? No one. Not enough. His own, his own family has never asked him to share his story. And here's you who he's just met, who rather than like everybody else trying to sell him a hat, right? Uh, You're instead asking him to share his story. And he's going to love that. Now, a follow-up question. The second feel-good question might be, what do you enjoy most about your work? It it probably sounds more like, uh, wow, you must have had some fascinating experiences. What do you enjoy most about your work? And again, just a feel-good question, right? It flies on the face of so much traditional sales teaching where immediately we're supposed to, you know, find their pain, right? You know, reach into their heart and tear it out, right? So we can come to the rescue. But the relationship hasn't been established yet. Don't, don't put that kind of pressure on yourself, to, you know, just, and then and he answers that question. Now you can then ask what I call the one key question that will separate you from everyone else. And, and that is to say, Gary, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with 
uh, would be a good prospective client for you, right? Uh, yeah, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a good customer for you? Uh, a good setup, a good frame into that question is, you know, Gary, I always love connecting good people with other good people. Uh, tell me, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a good uh, client for you or would make a good client for you, however you want to say it? And he's going to just be blown away, you know, by this. Um, now, when you can... Um, and by the way, if he's not in sales, but let's say has, has, you know, something like he's in the accounts receivable department, or he's in the, the engineer of a company, or he's the CEO or something where a prospect remember it's always values in the eyes of the beholder, where that wouldn't be of value to him. It same questions, same feel good questions. The key question might be, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with would be a good contact or connection for you or someone you'd like to meet? Okay. Now. At, at that um, at, at this place, this um, event where you are, you might see him a little while later. And, and while you're talking to someone else, you kind of wave him over and introduce him to this other person who you've been having the same conversation with. Give them each a nice, edifying introduction of one another. And you did, and see, you're doing this. You're the host. You're all of a sudden becoming a center of influence. Now, once you you leave this meeting, my suggestion is you send a personalized handwritten thank you note to Gary. And it simply says, hi, Gary, thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you at the whatever charity function. You know, what a nice group of people. If I can ever refer business your way, I certainly will. Best regards, sign your name, put it in an envelope, handwrite the address, regular stamp, send it out, boom. Okay, these are the things you can do that most other people won't be doing. And in a very quick period of time, you'll find yourself to have a, a really good growing network. Love that. Such fantastic advice. Thank you. And applicable. So those that are listening right now or watching this, take that advice whenever you're at a networking event and put it into practice. That's to me is about being others focused, right? Looking for yeah. the give, not focusing on the ask because we haven't established rapport or given value yet. Right. So exactly. I love that. So let's segue then into the, the Go-Giver, such an amazing, powerful book. And for those who haven't read it, it's you know, it's not a long book, but what it is, it's a very powerful, very meaningful book. So why don't we, if we could, let's go through the five laws of stratospheric success. And if we could give an example of how each of those laws applies to today in a real world situation that either you've experienced yourself or at least one that you've been involved in or have heard about. Yeah. So the go-giver is a, a business parable. It was co-authored with John David Mann, who's a wonderful, fantastic writer. I'm much more of a how-to guy, as you can, as you can probably tell. Uh, and there's five laws. We talked about the first law, the law of value. And, and that's understanding that the, you know, that the entire purpose is to provide this person with such a unique experience. Uh, yeah, as a customer, but also on the way to becoming a customer. So from the first time you meet this person, whether it's an inbound or an outbound call or contact through the relationship building process, the follow-up and follow-through, the um, sales process, the referral process, it's always making sure that this person feel special, they're treated special, and that the experience they receive is much more than just the intrinsic value of the product or service, which of course has to be great, but that the entire experience is, is just so wonderful that they believe that they have received more in value, relative worth or desirability than what they paid, while of course you make a very healthy profit. So law number two now takes us to the next step. This is the law of compensation. And this says your income is determined by how many people you serve. 
and how well you serve them. So where law number one is all about the, you know, give more in value than what you take in payment. Law number two says, tells us that the more people whose lives you touch with the exceptional value you provide, the more money with which you'll be rewarded. So where law number one, law of value is it represents your potential income. Law number two, the number of lives you impact equals your actual income. That's why referrals are so very, very important because you're able to see more people in less time. You're able to sell on high value rather than low price. You go in on borrowed uh, influence, uh, borrowed trust or vicarious experience and uh, referred prospects are already of the mindset that that's how you do business since that's how they met you. So they're much more likely to easily refer you to others. Law number three is the law of influence, which says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Uh, no, this does not mean that you are a, you're a doormat or a martyr or self-sacrificial in any way. Absolutely not. When we say place other people's interests first, we simply mean understanding as Joe learned from several of the mentors in the story that, and as you and I discussed earlier, uh, the golden rule of business, which says all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Well, there's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you in others than by genuinely moving from that I focus, that focus on yourself, to that other focus, that focus on bringing immense value to others. Or as Sam, one of the mentors, advised Joe to make your win all about the other person's win. Law number four, the law of authenticity says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. Uh, in this part of the story, Deborah Davenport shared a very important lesson, and that is all the skills in the world, the sales skills, technical skills, people skills, as important as they are, and they are indeed very, very important. They're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. But when you do, when you show up as yourself day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. They feel comfortable with you. They feel safe with you. Why wouldn't they? They know who they're getting. They trust your character. Law number five, the law of receptivity says the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Well, this really means nothing more than understanding that sure you breathe out, but you also have to breathe in. It's not one or the other. It's both. We breathe out carbon dioxide in oxygen, <laughs> right? Um, you know, you breathe out, which is giving. You breathe in, which is receiving. Despite the, the negative messages we receive from the world around us regarding money, regarding business, regarding prosperity, regarding abundance, horrible, horrible messages. The fact is giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. You're not a giver or a receiver, you're a giver and a receiver. But what you know, because there are the laws of life, the laws of economics, the laws of human nature, the giving comes first, right? We, we plant before we harvest, we sow before we reap, we give before we receive. So as long as you give value, right? Law number one, give value to many, place their interests first. Remember, they're not buying for your reasons, but for their reasons, you show up congruently and authentically. Now you've created that benevolent context to receive and receive in abundance. And as long as you allow yourself to receive, you will. You'll receive in abundance, You'll receive an abundance, an abundance of kindness, an abundance of friendship, an abundance of love, an abundance of money, an abundance of new business, an abundance of referrals. You just need to allow yourself to receive that. Beautiful. So amazing. And, and thank you for going through that. And I'll, you and I will have a separate conversation on this at some point because I personally have struggled I've learned a lot over the years, but I personally have struggled with a couple of those and the work continues today. Absolutely. Sure. So <laughs> this, this book, and I wanted everyone to be aware of this, which we're going to link in the show notes, but the book has sold over 1 million copies. It's been translated into 30 different languages and it's a Wall Street Journal and 
Business Week bestseller. So make a point to go out and read this book, but more importantly, read and apply the lessons in it. It'll change your life. So before we wrap up, please share with us where we can connect with you, where we can consume your content, and then also where we can find out more about some of the things that you have going on today that are new and different. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very kind. Uh, the easiest place is just Berg, B-U-R-G, uh, dot com. And they can scroll down and get a, a, the first chapter or excerpts of any of the books they'd like and then decide if they like it. They can always click through to Amazon. Uh, we also have a, a really wonderful membership. Actually, we call it a mentorship community, an online mentorship community uh, called the Go-Giver Success Alliance. And it's just a whole bunch of successful people. We get together every Wednesday via Zoom, although we also went on the... Um, platform, uh, the Mighty Networks platform, we actually have 24-7 access. Um, but we, but it's the highlight is our is our uh, Zoom on on Wednesday mornings. But it's just people getting together, successful people who are who are who all do business and live life the go giver way, uh, sharing with each other, uh, learning with each other. Uh, strategizing with each other, connecting with each other, um, and just building great relationships. And uh, so it's a lot of fun. So I invite people when you're scrolling down, if you, you'll you see on, on Berg.com, you'll see a, a picture of four people at a coffee shop. And you'll know, of course, if you've read the book, that that's Rachel's famous cafe. <laughs> if you haven't read the book, it won't make much sense to you, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> just click on that and uh, you can listen to the messages about it. Love it. Fantastic. And we're going to link to all of this in the show notes because I know I know everyone's going to be excited to not only pick up a copy of the book, but to learn more about the mentorship program and really just jump into your world and try to try to learn as much as they can from you. So thank you for that. So here, here's my final question to you. What are you adding or eliminating from your life to live more fulfilled and with greater purpose? Well, I mean, I, I think the things that we're doing, my business partner, Kathy Tajanel and I, you know, we, we have the different aspects of the business we enjoy. I'm still speaking, although most of my speaking now is, is virtual. You know, when I speak at conferences, it's mostly virtual, though a few, uh, you know, I'm still on the road. So as long as those remain fun, I'm 63. So I'm, I'm pretty much at this point only doing things that are fun. Uh, so as long as those remain fun, I'll continue to do that. But we also have a, a, an international team of certified go-giver speakers and coaches. Is. We love that. And of course, our, our Go-Giver Success Alliance is sort of our crown jewel at this point. We're just, we just have so much fun with that, with all the people that we get to meet on those. So, uh, so you know, that's kind of, and as far as what I cut out, basically, I cut out anything that I don't feel really serves. That I, you know, uh, uh, Dan Kennedy, who was a great direct response uh, marketer for many years, he, he had a, a saying that I used to have... Uh, put right on my posted right on my computer. And, and, it, and it was a question. It was, is what I'm about to do right now, the highest and best use of my time. And if it isn't, I don't do it. Now I always am polite, respectful, tactful. When I tell someone I can't do it, that's, I think that's very important. People often misinterpret a go giver as, Oh, you have to just do things for everybody. And you have to, of course not. Absolutely not. Uh, but what a go-giver would do is make sure that the other person always feels honored and always feels welcome and always feels, you know, good about the genuinely good about themselves. But the fact is we do have to say no most of the time, or we'll be doing things we really have no right doing and shouldn't be doing and that, that don't serve. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And Bob, thank you so much for taking some time to share your, your wisdom and your knowledge, share some information about your, your books, what's been going on in your world. This, uh, the go-giver is again, such an amazing book and it has changed lives and will continue to. And it's, you know, it's amazing when you look back and you think about when the book was written and how it's still so relevant, actually as relevant today as ever. And I love that. I love that for you. And I love that for all those who are consuming it and applying it. So thank you so much for joining us today. My absolute pleasure, Jay. Thank you for having me. 
Absolutely. And for all of you, thank you so much for watching and listening. And please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review and to enjoy more episodes and to learn how J. Shear Business Consulting can help build a solid foundation for your service-based business. All you have to do is visit jshearbusinessconsulting.com. And until next time, keep learning and growing, study and apply the laws and the go-giver, and we'll see you on the next Business Minds Coffee Chat. Take care. J. J. Shear. J. Shear. J. Shear. J. Shear. Business Consultant. J. Shear. J. Shear. Business Consulting. 